Good evening, everyone. This is December 2nd. We're um, very pleased to have Paul Muir give us a little talk tonight. Um, the title of his talk is 2012 and Beyond. The faster rotation of the Earth and the return of the energy worker. It's a follow-on from last week's talk, 2012, Kali Yuga, Megaliths, Pulsed EMF, and the Returning Golden Age. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so I, I think before I uh, uh, move on um, into the talk, I want to uh, just... Uh, talk about uh, there were a couple of errors in last week's talk and uh, because there's a need to get things as precise as I can I'd like to um, name those two mistakes I think anybody who's in the science world will know that uh, how magnets work uh, they repel from like uh, poles and they attract from the opposite poles so that was, uh, I did actually correct that in last week's talk. The second era was uh, talking about the Kali Yuga and um, and how it was the age of the female demon. That, that actually uh, uh, appears uh, in a little bit more research that I did this week to be the, f uh, it, to be the age of the male demon. Um, so I don't know where I got that from, but uh, so those are the corrections. So I could um, I could say, well, you know, eggshells an omelette, and you drop a little bit of eggshell. Uh, I've always uh, tried with uh, the old bar weight research to be as precise. So I'd like to talk uh, just just a little bit uh, of an aside. Hath Hathaway um, Hathaway, the uh, leading NASA. Um, solar scientist in 2006 um, predicted for this sunspot cycle by now that we would have about 300 sunspots um, he got it wrong um, you know we probably had about 20 maybe 15 to 20 uh, he was quoted in 2007 as um, the most violent sunspot cycle. Um, it's the least uh, least violent. Although I'm not suggesting that the sun's not going to do odd things, but it's not through the sunspot sunspot cycle. Um, it's through particle causing eruptions on the surface of the sun. Um, so if he can change his uh, predictions every um, year. Or every time he gets data that says that his prediction is wrong, then he changes it. So he's been changing it downward, downward, downward. So again, it, you know, it's um, I mean, I've made a couple of errors, but uh, people who are paid scientists are making even greater errors and not even admitting to their errors. In fact, those errors were uh, um, taken up by many, many of the New Age researchers. Uh, back in 2007, you know, they were just saying all oh, the NASA scientists are saying this sunspot cycle is going to be most violent and it's going to be a violent, violent, violent time. And of course, it's um, the only violence is, um, you, you know, the wars we got really because the sun has been pretty quiet. So the sun has gone in minimum. So I thought I'd just like to... Um, put that into context is that uh, this uh, energy, how the energy works, how the all bar wave works has been lost for 5,000 years and uh, <clears throat> it's 20 years of research and some parts of that research um, we may have tiny bits of eggshell in it as, as the omelette and the eggshell scenario but uh, I think those 20, 20 years um, uh, of, of research will be built on over the next many thousands of years. Hopefully this stuff is not lost for mankind because I think it's essential that we, we take it on board. This is why I've shared it. Uh, I have not, um, I've not gone, although I, I could go down the publishing route, I've been offered uh, facilities to join publish. I think that um, 
I think it's for mankind, and I think that if the right person comes along in the right understanding, then I may go down the, the science route to publish. So we'll go back to the um, the nature of the talk now because I've waffled on far too long. And uh, 2012 and beyond, the faster rotation of the Earth, the return of the energy worker. And so we got to, you know, you can ask, well, how can a faster rotation bring around the return of the energy worker? Um, what is an energy worker? So I gotta, I'm going to try and uh, create some images in the mind of, um, so that you can imagine um, energy fields um, being more, more energized by the rotation or ley lines being uh, energ energized by a quicker rotation, which is pulsing energy through them at a quicker rate, and how that will um, affect and how we can use those those that that pulsed energy throughout the planet. So I'll start with the um, fluorescent tube effect. And the fluorescent tube effect. Uh, there's a number of um, uh, people who do art in in the environment who will uh, and there's some quite stunning pictures on the internet of um, people who place fluorescent tubes or hold them underneath power lines and they power up. So you can imagine now. Um, a field of fluorescent tubes planted and they're all glowing. Now they're not actually, um, you can actually hold them in your hand and they'll glow. So when you take them out of that uh, electromagnetic field, or you pull those, um, pull them out of that electromagnetic field, there's no light emitted from the tube. So uh, as that tube enters the um, overspill from those pylons, it becomes illuminated. So we have to then look at the principle of, of a human uh, electrical body and the effects on that body. Well, I obviously talked about it last week, which there were suicide clusters underneath pylons. Um, there are cancer clusters. These are people living underneath them now, living, living, living uh, in the vicinity of them. And so these power lines um, are affecting the electromagnetic body. They af they affect the energy is pre the, the the energy is present there. It's unseen. It's capable of lighting light bulbs, and it's capable of affecting our electromagnetic body. But of course, this is the um. This is the, um, not the natural electrical, well, electrical magnetic field of the Earth. This is, uh, this is a man-made um, electrical grid. And um, Tesla actually designed a system to use the Earth's natural forces. And um, <clears throat> I see a time when that will return. I, I see when we start to use the organic electrics, if you want to call it that, the, the Earth's living electrics, uh, rather than the, uh, these unnatural uh, electrics that are, that are keep uh, causing these cancer clusters, depressions, suicides, and a number of other things. So what we have now is a power line. Uh, we have a fluorescent tube that you can put into it and it will become charged. So now we imagine electrical fields which are naturally running around the Earth. The megaliths are standing on them, uh, what I talked about um, last week. And um, as we move into them, we start to pick up that energy. So that's the principle of why I wanted to introduce the fluorescent tube the negative effects of the electrical pylon and um, obviously we talked about some of the the new new devices that um, 
uh, of the body electric with uh, the regeneration of seeds and things like that. Um, I was I was talking to uh, one of the uh, the group uh, members uh, of the Seekers of the Source this week, and I find this very synchronistic. Uh, is that uh, on the television was a pulsed electromagnetic device. Um, so it's on terrestrial TV now, mainstream TV endorsed by one of the good morning doctors on one of them um on on our itv channel which is uh, again one of the it's the, the the one that has advertising so it's not the bbc but it's the the one that's been running uh, you know since uh, broadcast or was the second channel to be broadcast and then actually advertising advertising a circulation booster that uses electric electrical pulsing um to the feet and so these so these devices now um and of course that uh, cliff high was already predicting uh, some of these new electrics are already showing up and being advertised on mainstream tv and that to me blew me out away I mean, I had to pause because we, we've got a television package that you can pause. I had to pause it and re-watch re that advert because I couldn't believe my eyes that um, normally for poor circulation, we're giving all sorts of drugs and drugging people up. And this, 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 is, our, this is one of the first indications <clears throat> that we're moving out of the old paradigm. So... I was fascinated by that. So, um, what I'm going to talk about is that uh, the method of, of walking into these energy fields and how I've recorded the orbs attaching to the hand. And uh, quite simply, it's uh, if you imagine the body as being the, the electrical tube, and as you walk over uh, energy fields, uh, this is a technique that I would use to photograph my hand um, to see if it was if it was outputting energy. So very much like the 50 sequential photographs we got with the stones glowing, um, I'd walk in a straight line, take a photograph of my right hand or my left hand, see if they're charged, see if I'm walking over a ley line. As I walk over the ley line, I pick up energy. And as I pick up energy, my hand is glowing. And as the hand starts to glow, uh, like you see it over the stones, in certain conditions, the orbs will attach, attach to the hand. Um... So I'll tell you a little story about the man in the woods who walk in his Makita dogs. And um, I, was, I, t I spent some time talking to him. He, he walks a lot. And uh, he'd read Hawkins' uh, uh, brief history of time. So we, we had a common interest. So I was telling him about there are certain spots in the wood or certain ley lines that as you cross them, your hands will, your, your feet will be picking up the energy or, uh, or you'll be walking into an energy field just like the fluorescent tube that's being placed underneath the pylon, albeit unnaturally. And uh, I started moving him around. He said, oh, no, my hands. And his hand was in focus for about four or five photographs. And eventually I moved him to a spot where I, you know, where I generally park the car. And his hands, were, his hands started to glow. And there was an orb near it, and you always get the orbs. Uh, you'll always get a cluster around that en that energy, um, or generally you will. And he was blown away by it. And so this is quite, but it, this is quite simply going into a field, picking up its charge, and its charge coming to the hand. Now any dowser will tell you, oh yeah, I walk over energy fields and the rods move. Well, maybe they should put the rods down and start photographing their hands at night. Obviously, when there's more moisture in the air, these things become easier to photograph. And so, um, and so, 
what we did, and we we developed this technique of of walking in certain directions over fields, and we would flash off as many photographs as we could, and we would get these hands on the stone effect. So everyone's going to say, well, you know, this is is it, it, this doesn't seem like a real effect, but it matches the effect of the stones and the fifty sequential photographs. So um, one of the I'll just tell you about a uh, little bit of evidence. Um, I'm not saying it's great evidence. I'm not saying it's empirical. Uh, we know this is the the, the Earth pulse is uh, an intermittent uh, an effect at, at the megaliths because science them scientists themselves have recorded anomalous intermittent effects at megaliths, but they can't repeat it. So um. I just want to I just want to talk about um uh the doctor of geology was sort of assisting us or helping us and advising me in certain parts of the the you know when I was very new to science and I hadn't really had a look at um hadn't really look at look at science since I was in the doing my A levels with biology and um chemistry, physics, and whatever. So Peter, who'd, um, who was interested in megaliths and, and done a bit of work and has had um, CAD who uh, recently um, accepting some of his finds, he does a lot of hill walking, had bought a, a handheld uh, from Germany a handheld electromagnetic tester or, or low level EMF tester. It's a little handheld device that you put over and you can you can put it on different settings and uh and uh it'll record an output. So he was going over Peter was going all over all the tips of the stones trying to get a reading, seeing whether there was a um any physoelectric uh, uh, effect from the megaliths or whether there was any fluctu fluctuation from the megaliths. And um, I said, oh, I said to Peter, I said, oh, well, um, I, I said to John, John, work with some energy now. So he starts vibrating energy. And um, vibrating energy, I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit later on. So John now is vibrating energy, and um, uh, Peter puts the EMF tester on on, on the setting, and I I don't know what that setting is. Uh, he, he it was his piece of equipment, and uh, it took uh, the EMF tester off scale. So there is a bit of evidence that the body can produce an electrical or electromagnetic or low level EMF. Uh, effect which can be recorded and so um there is a little bit of an uh, evidence so we have the mega lists that switch on and off and they glow we got the tube that will pick up energy from the and the human body is a receiver of electrical impulse and so as the earth's rotation starts to to quicken and the pulse through the earth and the, and the, uh, and the ley lines start to be reactivated we will start to pick up um, the the these energies um from the earth so we have a couple of different effects that i've talked about over the over the last few weeks and uh, one of them is uh the pulsed emf uh, they're using it as i as i just stated as a product to heal spinal injury, uh, they've been using electromagnet magnets, and there was some work on regenerating limbs in salamanders and fiddler crabs, and uh, their their limbs grow quicker. Um, so, but this is a pulsed ele electromagnetic um, frequency. So, I want to talk about ancient understanding of pulsed energy. So we we'll go. Oh, hang on a moment. They didn't have circuit boards, or and and also energy work. So you think, well, you know, how does how does that fit in with this? And so I suppose I I should explain. 
there's there's a, a thing called um, um, well, it's named Omni Pade Hum, um, and I put a little title uh, uh, Omni Pade Hum, pulsed energy from within the energy worker. So now we have the the um, light bulb effect of the body uh, going in and out of magnetic fields, picking up energy. So we have uh, uh, an energetic body that's been a receiver of the energy from the quicker spin and the more active. But um, but we're also having a look at the omni pare hum. Now. You go, oh, what is this now? And how does this fit in? And, you know, does it fit in? So I'll give you the, a little bit of uh, um, what it, uh, what they talk about uh, of the Omni Padihum. And this is ancient, again. Um, uh, mantras. So they, they class the Omni Padihum as a mantra may be interpreted by practitioners in many ways or even as a mere sequence of sound whose effects lie beyond strict meaning. So, uh, it's some sort of sequence of sound, and uh, I'm going to give a demonstration of that. Uh, but I would, I'd like to carry on with this, because this is a, a pulsed energy energetic effect that complements with the outputting of energy. They go on to say when in Wikipedia or one of the sites it is preceded by an om syllable and followed by the hum syllable both interjections without without linguistic meaning. So there is no translation from anywhere to say that this these are actually these are actually um, words. They were sung and they were vibrated. So I'll give you a, a you know a breakdown of what they think that um, uh, you know how this how this works. The arm purifies pride and ego, and it's represented by a color of white. The ma purifies jealousy and the lust for entertainment and is represented by a colour of green. Ni, passion and desire, it purifies. Its colour is yellow. Pa, ignorance and prejudice, blue. Mi, poverty and possessiveness, which is red. And hum, which is wisdom. And black. So, this now this thing that has no translations, it is believed to be um, a sound that lie beyond strict meaning. Well, simply, it is the pulse from within the individual that creates the pulsed energetic effect within the energy worker. So this, this was known from Malaya, Tamil, Chinese, Korean, Japanese, Russian, Mongolian, Vien Vietnamese, and Thai. That is basic, you know, that is a massive amount of people, massive amounts of <coughs> cultures that know about the vibration of energy. So, th th is there, is there anybody, is there um other um understandings of energy workers and how they pulse energy and of course i i suppose i um i'll enter into a topic um now that will probably offend the majority of the listeners on youtube it's not meant to offend them it's meant to uh be an individual's understanding of uh, of Christ and how the controlling elite have misled us. And what I have to say will will um, 
offend the Illuminati, what I what I class as the Illuminati Christians. And uh, so what is an Illuminati Christian? Um, you have to act, you have to ask how they act. And they act through judgment. They act through hate. And they hate all other religions. So in effect, they <coughs> they don't understand about the Good Samaritan. They don't understand about compassion. They don't underst understand that we are all one. And they have just been led by, you know, the the church. You know, why are there rich churches and poor poor people? You know, these these are the things that we should have answers from our church. Why are there paedophilic priests? And why do they get promoted or moved on rather than um, certainly, um, you know, they're certainly not handed over to the police. Why was the church the biggest recipient of compensation when the slave trade was abolished? You know, the questions are far too, far too big. Why in my in my in my work um when I sold my photocopying business um the person who, who then I, I did uh, did some just odd jobs for had a number of clients. Uh, I I only generally work with the corporates. And a number of those were churches and um, I asked a number of these vicars and, and whatever in the whole of South Wales, you know, how many, how many, how many people homeless sleep in the churches at night? You know, a lot of these these pieces of land that the church have, um, they have six or seven bedroom rectories. These are all the classical stone built buildings that were built around the church time, or you, you know. Maybe built a little bit later than the churches, but they are ma some of these are massive, ha massive houses with, you know, servants' quarters and and whatever. And I've asked some of the the vicars, you know, how many do you put up in your home, homeless? Because this is what Christ would want. You know, if it, you know, maybe I'm looking at this too simplistically, but I mean, the act of the the church collection is collecting. Uh, the money is probably given, you know, the Illuminati Christian will give it out of guilt, trying to buy himself into into heaven or whatever confused state that their minds are in. But the genuine Christians, the ones who see Christ in, um, who want to carry out Christ's ministry properly, Give that money out of compassion. Obviously, the Illuminati, Chris, uh, the Illuminati control and lead of the church and all the other paradigms that, that they've created, whether it be science or whatever, just take the money. We've got charities that aren't charitable. I mean, this, the, these things are, are pretty damn crazy. So my, my understanding of the Christ being comes from my energy work. And so, what uh, I can I can give you a little quote here that I wrote from my notes because I, I want to just do that. My understanding of Christ that He was an energy worker and through His life of compassion earned the authority to use the energy of creation. You can call it the Creator's energy. You can uh, connection to the Creator. But he had the authority, he, he earned it through his compassion, through his life of compassion. 
you know, most Christ, most Illuminati Christians wouldn't understand about compassion. They understand about hating Muslims. That's about it. So I want to talk about this, uh, the the Christ being, and uh, how, uh, from my point of view, this is how he was an energy worker. And so, in John fourteen one. Uh, Christ said, most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me and the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do. So, Christ was a, sh I, I mean, let's, let's call him a teacher. He was teaching his disciples that they can do greater works if they live their life through compassion. They will heal the sick. They will be able to cast out demons. Um, so that was one of the the quotes that. Uh, so the the Illuminati Christ um, says that he was the only begotten Son of God. And what Christ is saying is, you can do even greater works than me. You know. So I think that. Uh, for me as an energy worker, I fully, uh, I believe, I fully understand what Christ was talking about. If, uh, if there's any uh, Illuminati Christians listening, I would ask them to explain to me, be thou as wise as a serpent, because I understand what that is. I understand the nature of that thing. And they won't understand nothing about it. So we go to we go to the purpose of why I've introduced the Christ because the Christ for me is a tremendous example of how everyone should be leading their lives and how I want to live my life. Not the Illuminati's uh, Christ. I'm not interested in that. I don't give to uh, to those organisations. So in Luke eight eight. 45 Jesus who touched me Jesus asked when they all denied it Peter said master the people are crowding and press, pressing against you but Jesus said someone touched me know that that power has gone out of me and so um, we can go back to last week's talk or the week before when we were touching the stones and the charge ran through the earth and dissipated off. And so Christ was uh, walking through the energy fields of the earth, picking up energy. That's why he went to the wilderness, holding the charge, and he knew that he knew the process of the energy of creation. He also knew about psychological projection. He was without sin, cast the first stone. So he, he knew he was... Uh, as far as I was concerned, and as far as I am concerned, um, that charge, when I was working with a cancer patient, drained off me in the same way, and I heard those words. I heard them from a memory when I was a child, when I was told this story, and it stayed with me. And when, the, um, when I went to do some healing, I was charged all over my body and the of the energy just drained into the person from me. And so to me, you know, it's pretty damn simple what this means. So Christ knew it. Um, all, all those religions of the Omni party home knew um, how to vibrate energy within inside themselves. And so we... Um, we're building up a picture now of uh, an individual being able to hold charge inside themselves and to be able to vibrate it within inside themselves and to push and direct that energy, but not with will, with the hands. And so we um, move on a little bit and say, well, we'll have a look at uh, some of the ancient rock art now. 
because everyone's going to be saying, oh, well, you know, yeah, you've got some crappy pictures, uh, maybe 50 photographs of a stone glowing, and you put your hand on it over it, and your hand glows, and then you put your hand on it, and it stops glowing. But, yeah, you know, you could have fiddled that, and I may, may have a few thousand photographs of my hand glowing when I walk into energy fields. You know, um, so we can add another piece of evidence to this. And what we have to do is uh, we can look at Bronze Age rock art. So um, there is massive amounts of Bronze Age rock art of where orbs are attached to the energy worker or the stick man's hand. So the, mega, so the megalithic builders have actually recorded what they were doing with the energy on the stones. I mean, you only have to look at Fintorp in Sweden or the Scandinavian rock art. And you can see a man waving, well, what we call his orb waving, but he's, all, he's got charge over his hands. And, and he, even in that photograph, they have the hook web orb. Um, some of these orbs I talk about in my book that I've uh, published, Lulu, Lulu. But the hookweb orb is, is, you know, one of the distinct things. It has a distinct geometry which um, has uh, th three... Th it's just a cutout that is so distinct, and I probably would do better to not to describe it I've, I've obviously calculated the angles of uh, of how uh, within the sphere this cutout works and I'll post up um, to this video uh, I'll post up uh, an image of that and so um, when we found the rock art obviously back in 2006 or whatever we started to we already had numbers and numbers of photographs of orbs attached to the hand anyway so what you're doing is you're picking up you're walking through the energy fields as you walk through the energy fields you're picking up energy you are the light bulb or the fluorescent tube that energy then charges round the hand and orbs will charge off them and convert and um, and we can use that for healing. And we can also vibrate inside ourselves to make that uh, effect grow stronger. So I go back to the rock art. And in one of the rock art, there are two stick men. And they are throwing energy spheres at each other. So they've got one stick man with an orb in his hand. And then there's lots of a line of um, orbs to the other stick man. So we actually, um, I got John and Matthew, which was one of uh, Johnny's friends, to uh, see if they could reproduce that event uh, in digital photograph using the flash, uh, the rapid shooting effect that I talked about in the last talk. And they had the orbs transfer in between them exactly as they did in the rock art. You know, so it's pretty... Um, pretty simple that it's uh you know that these these people you know these ancient peoples knew it i'm pretty damn sure that the illuminati know it and um and uh i think it's all been hidden from us we've uh, got a clouded past and so um you know this week i was looking at the um the shining ones uh, these are the from the Egyptian Book of the Dead. Now, the Shining Ones were linked to the serpents. So we have the orb, bar, and wave. The spheres fall out of the wave or the serpent. The Shining Spheres that they saw actually attached to the energy workers. And so the Shining Ones... Could actually, could actually have a dualistic meaning, which are the shining ones in relation to the the serpent where they fall out the tail off, which is the wave. And also their interaction with the people who can use the energy. 
So we have a dual dual meaning to this. The shining ones are the ones that are linked to the serpent, and the serpent is nothing more than the wave, very very similar to the sky broadcast wave. Or, but it, this was seen in a more energetic uh, environment, and the shining ones could be those uh, could be. Uh, seeing the effect, um, in fact, at night when I'm working with energy, if we take a, a very um, powerful headlamp and shine it at the hand, the hand glows and you can see the, the ball of energy around the hand. We've actually we we actually spent some time recording it on video and it just attaches to the hand. Um, we only, you know, it's uh, it's just an energetic effect uh, of uh, uh, walking through the fields, picking up energy. So, in summarising um, uh, this talk, and uh, uh, there's one little part that I'm going to um, just do a demonstration of the OM, and um, people can have a little bit of a vote on YouTube once I place this up as to which one they think is the more energetic but I'll, I'll talk about that we talked last week about the intermittent energy effects from the megalithic structures we talked about um, seeds uh, producing greater crops when they're placed in magnetic chambers uh, rock chambers uh, ancient rock chambers we also have ancient records that vibrate in energy through sound mantra, uh, which healed through a pulsed effect. We also have re records in petroglyphs that the any inter interaction took place. We, we even have the misunderstood Christ being that everybody wants to worship, but nobody wants to live their lives like. And so, um, what I'm going to do now is, uh, for all the listeners, and uh, is I'm going to do three demonstrations of the Om, Omni Padum Hum. Um, and uh, for any of the people who are susceptible to energy fields, those are people who get headaches in storms or are bipolar. Um, many people who, who actually feel, uh, sense things, I'd ask them to hold their hands up to the, the, um, to the uh, video, uh, to the laptop or PC screen, and just see if they can feel any, any difference. So there's going to be three types. First, this first demonstration is just a single um, pulse of energy, which is the OM. So I'm just going to do one sequence, but I will do a longer video um, and place it on my YouTube uh, some other time. So here we go. It's just the OM. 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 So that's just the OM. Now what I'm going to do is vibrate the OM and just see for any of those people if there's any difference with that vibration. And then the third um, Example is just using the Omni, Omni Fari Hum uh, mantra because for us to take um, steps towards returning to the golden age, we have to return to the golden age. And some of this is uh, returning to the golden age, we have to relearn what was hidden from us by the Illuminati. Or the controlling elite, you know. So the Omni Pari Hum. Omni Pari Hum, 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 Omni Pari Hum. 
money buddy um money buddy um and so well um so those are just examples of it. Uh, they're probably not long enough, and uh, probably what I'll do is uh, I'll record uh, record that uh, later and um, post that up uh, some later time. So really what we have is that um, we have a faster... If we ha uh, the faster rotation is occurring... Um, the energy now is pulsing through the planet quicker. We will be the fluorescent tube effect by picking up this energy. It uh, the, the this energy um, pulsed electromagnetic frequency uh, creates a physioelectric effect. It acts on bone. It acts on DNA. And um, so we're entering into a. Entering into a time where um, where the whole returning uh, effect of um, what we used to know is returning back to us. So I suppose I should just say that it's uh, a privilege and an honour to be giving these talks to the small group called the Seekers of the Source. They are... Um, in some ways, they they put their themselves under pressure because we these people are seeking uh, the true nature of the universe, and there's some things that uh, this is to the seekers of the source, and um, and to everybody listening. Uh, I'll pose this question: How many how many how many people would show no compassion? to sick children in a cancer hospital. And I think the pretty simple answer is that the majority would show compassion in whatever way. Uh, you may ask why I ask such a question. Um, there is a reason because I... I've given the Illuminati a bit of a slate in all the control and elite. The, peter, the pedophiles, the occultists, the ruling elite are all sick with the age of Carla, Carly. And so they're just responding to this age, but they are like children who are sick. And we have to show them compassion. Otherwise, we, we are nothing. We cannot, we cannot even fulfill our own nature. If we hate these people who, who carry out this these actions, we just grow hatred inside ourselves. So the following statement is for all of us. Only through forgiveness can we truly find un unconditional love. As we forgive those who trespass against us comes to mind. Unless through forgiveness we will drive out our own pain and demons. These actions will reconnect us to the source. These actions will return our demons of suffering into, into divinity and thus usher in the new age of oneness. I'd like to thank everyone for listening and uh, it's been an honour. Thank you. And thank you, Paul, very much.